listening, uh, you out there at uh, Facebook, if anybody watching, might be a few, whatever, <clears throat> live right now, uh, we're going to uh, stand and read 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let us stand here in our church auditorium. I'll read verse 1. We'll read 2 together. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye would be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, but they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye the idolaters as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as many of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted, a blood that ye are able but will with the temptation also make <clears throat> a way to bear it. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the Scripture. This is powerful Scripture, and we pray we can learn from it. We pray that soul that is nearest hell could be saved tonight. We pray that. We put it in your hands. Bless the Scripture. Bless the preaching of your Word. Fill this preacher with your blessed Holy Spirit that hearers can be saved that are not saved, that backsliders can be reclaimed, that Christians can, can higher ground. Help us now, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Now, it starts out and in, in, uh, it talks about some Old Testament things that happen. You know, the old some, some Christians, I, I know some preachers there, they call themselves grace preachers, and they pretty much preach from Paul's epistles. Uh, and they they're, uh, they call themselves grace preachers. Some of them, uh, they're actually O'Hareites. It's something that started in uh, uh, in the in the Midwest, and he uh, he taught that, and and they they call themselves uh, grace people, and and uh, they just take most of their teachings from. The epistles of Paul. I've got, I've got to, I've got my teaching from Genesis one one to the, the end of Revelation twenty two. All the whole scoop. I want all the promises. I want it all. I want to follow it. I want to obey it. Oh yes, I know there's Old Testament and there's a New Testament and and uh, there's new revelations and prophecy has been fulfilled and all that. But you see, these things in the Old Testament they for were for our learning. And now let's not forget that. They're for our learning. Now let's look at a few of these things. And, uh, well, let's start out. It says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be uh, ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized uh, unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Now here's a cloud baptism. Remember this, that every time the, word, the Bible says baptism doesn't mean water baptism. That's where a lot of people get messed up and 
and they talk about uh, baptismal regeneration and such the like. And, of course, uh, uh, what saves you? Do you know what saves you and I? It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit that baptizes us into the body of Christ. That's what saves us. When the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to live within us, and we have that. So every time the word baptism is seen in the Bible, don't think there's a cloud baptism here. There's a number of different baptisms in the Bible, but they're baptized in the, in the cloud and in the sea. Uh, that's what it says. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? Verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. I, I heard Travis chuckle when we were reading that in the Scriptures. Did, did that's the first time that hit you like that, about that rock being Christ? Isn't that something? Yeah, yeah that's good. Uh but that that rock, that uh, that water, that living water that came out of that rock, you know, I mean, it had to be a lot of water to feed three million people, huh? Yeah. I mean, they had a crowd, and it says that rock was Christ, and uh, it, and uh, you see, Christ is pictured all through the Bible. The Lord Jesus Christ was in Genesis one one. Do you understand that Jesus Christ was in Genesis one one? It said in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. That was Jesus. He was, a, he was the creator. In John chapter 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word, that was Jesus. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. All things were made by Him and not anything made that was made. Oh my, this is wonderful. Now, I'm my friend, uh, I, uh, I said I was going to say hi. I'm going to stop right now while I remember as we get in his preaching, I want to say hi to Trace, Trace Hefner. Trace was in church this morning. It's been about 11 months now since he had his terrible accident on a motorcycle, and he was in intensive care. But he was able to come on the bus to church this morning, and that was a blessing, and I was able to visit with him for a moment this afternoon. And I said, Trace, yeah, you watch me on the Facebook preaching tonight, and I greet you. So hello, Trace. And, uh, tra you know, it, it's a good thing. You know, there's people in other states. Uh, oh, my friend, uh, you know, Eugene got saved. He sat right up here in the front row and come forward and got saved. I don't know, eight years, probably ten years. It's been a long time. But uh, uh, he's in Houston, Texas. He might have to get up on his roof. For, I've seen on television, you see the news today, and they're telling folks in Houston, get up on a roof. And so uh, that's where he is. And he said he couldn't go to church this morning. He watched this morning. I hope he's on watching tonight, too. Maybe maybe he uh, is up on the roof, couldn't take his, uh, well, you can take your phone on the roof, but he might not have any cell uh, service anymore. I don't know. But uh, how do you, Gene, if he's out there, too? That this, this Facebook thing is a pretty good thing. It can, you can go all over. I've seen there's someone who quoted uh, uh, people in uh, Arizona that that was uh, uh, doing it in and uh, uh, different places around the country. Uh, technology is amazing. Um, but it said here that rock uh, that followed them was Christ. So uh, Jesus Christ, the rock. Jesus Christ, the author of the Bible. Jesus Christ, the living word. Verse 5, it says, but with many of them, God was not pleased, was not well pleased. You know, God can be well pleased with us. I hope I get that one. He can be pleased with us. And how about he can be not so pleased with us. And you know, sometimes God could even get mad at us as his children. You know, God gets mad at his children when they disobey him. Do you understand that? How many of you ever disobey God like I do sometimes? I don't like to. I, I like that. We were watching some songs and singing them. Uh, on, we don't have a piano player, so we watch on a, on, a, on, a, on a big screen television and on the YouTube, and we uh, they sing a, the hymn, and they have the words up there, and, and, and we can uh, uh, sing a, uh, along. And it's, I need you every hour, amen? I need you. We need to walk with God all the time. And I was thinking, I was thinking of it because uh, uh, temptation will come, won't it? If we, don't, if we don't stay close to God, 
we'll be tempted. And what do we do when we're tempted? Sin. Yeah, that's what happens. So it says, but uh, with many of them, God was not pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. God overthrew his people. Let's read about it. Look here now. We're in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 6. Now these things were our examples. Do, do you see why the Bible was written? Do you see why all this was recorded? Do you see why the disobedience of the children of Israel in the wilderness was recorded? It was for what? For our example. He wants to show us so we can avoid it, you see. That's what it's talking about here. Uh, now these things were uh, our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. So let's look and see what they lusted after. Let's see what they lusted after and let's say we can be. Did you know nothing ever changed? It's the same yesterday, today, and for there's Did you know there's nothing new under the sun? Oh, we might get there faster and we might have internet and all that, but it's the same old, same old sin. The same thing they lusted after uh, in the Bible days before they had, uh, uh, I mean, uh, before they even invented the wheel. The wheel's quite a while back, but they didn't have all this fast transportation and, and all of this. And I see how these planes can get you. You can, uh, you can take a plane. I, I saw uh, on, uh, on the Internet a couple of days ago, you can go, you can get on a plane in uh, uh, Orlando and you can be in London, England in eight hours. Now, they used to have that, that Concorde jet. You remember that? That thing used to fly over there. But it don't, I wonder why they quit flying that thing. Didn't they, didn't they have a trouble in it or something in the landing and they took it out of service or something? But that thing was faster. I don't, I don't know how fast that thing could go from, but it was faster. Uh, they, they used to break the sound barrier, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, uh, It was pretty fast. I don't know what the, I'm not sure what they fly, but but you you can get a nonstop uh, flight, go from Orlando to uh, London, England, eight hours. Now, these things were for our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they lust. There's always been evil things. There's always been people, and it happened to the Israel, Israelites there in, in, uh, on the desert. Now, let's read about it. Uh, here I see a couple of people just come on uh, internet on uh, Facebook here. Welcome. God bless you. Glad you're here. We're in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 7. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. This is talking about the people back in the, in the wilderness. Uh, as it is written, hop, uh, ain't nothing new under the sun. Think about it. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. I bet you a lot of them was doing it last night. I don't know who won the uh, Someone told me in church this morning who won the fight and all that. They had big fight, big hype and everything. But there's a lot of people last night. The people sat down to eat and drink. They was eating wings and pizza pie and and fried chicken and on and on, you know, and uh, and they were uh, and uh, to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. I mean, they did it in the desert back in the wilderness. We do it today, don't we? Uh, I'll tell you what, you, you you better be careful about your worldly parties. You better forget about that. There's probably some people didn't make it to church all around the country today, maybe all around the world, because they was up partying last night watching uh, uh, a couple of idiots trying to knock each other out. <laughs> we have some stupid things we call entertainment, don't we? <laughs> How heathen. <laughs> How ancient, huh? <laughs> Man, I, they used to have fist fights back before they had television, didn't they? Yeah. Where is, he ain't here in church tonight. He's supposed to be in church tonight. He was here this morning. He told me yesterday, he sat there. Uh, we were doing some work around the church, and we were watching a couple uh, uh, gospel videos, and Donald Johnson, I don't I, I hope he's watching on the Facebook. It was raining. He had he's riding a bicycle right now. He's got a motor scooter that's busted, but he's riding a bicycle. 
He was way over on the other side of town. It rained like crazy, so he didn't make it back to church. Don, I hope you're watching on the Facebook. Send up a heart or something, up, whatever you can send up. He probably, I don't know if he's watching or not. But he, but he told me yesterday, you know, a lot of people claim they're experts on, on everything. And uh, he sat right there in the front row next to me. We were watching a gospel video, and, and uh, Johnson said, I didn't know nothing about the fight or anything. He said, oh, that big fight. And he was telling me all about it. And, and Meriwether going to make $400 million and and McGregor going to make $150 million and, and on and on. And, and uh, he, this is what Johnson said. <laughs> I hope you're watching. Is you on there? There's his name on there. There's others on there. Johnson said, why McGregor's going to tear up Meriwether? He said, he's going to tear him up. He said, I'd bet everything I own on it. That's what he said. I says, boy, you're pretty sure of it. He said, oh, yeah. Meriwether's through. I said, he must be do something right if they're going to pay him $400 million, only going to pay the other guy $150 million. <laughs> he must have something going on, huh? <laughs> but anyway, and, and um, I've seen it on the news. I like Meriwether better than that McGregor because McGregor, had him, his nose up against his nose, and, and, and he tick, 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 talking like that, you know. I'll just shut up and show up at the fight. And let's see what you got, you know. <laughs> Let, let's see what you got. Uh, I never, well, I used to get, when I, I used to, well, I don't have to go into that before I was saved. I ain't been in a fight since I've been saved, you know. 48 years in uh, three months, I've never been in a fight. I used to like to do that. But, uh, but anyway, um, Johnson knew all about it. He says, "Oh yeah, and Meriwether. I mean, uh, McGregor. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a knockout. It's gonna be early rounds. All that baloney." <laughs> all right, need uh, the people uh, sat down to eat and drink, rose up to play. Verse eight. Here's talking about it back in the desert. Watch now here in the wilderness. Neither let us commit fornication. Why did you know fornication isn't something that just been uh, uh, dreamt up now? Huh. Got some new people on here. Hi, how are you? Haven't seen you in a while on, on Facebook. Some old friends. Other people get on this Facebook. But you know, verse 8, we're in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 8. It says, Neither let us commit fornication. Did you know we didn't just invent fornication in the last 20 years or 30 years? You think fornication has just come in here lately? Uh, it, was, it was back there uh, in the wilderness with the children of Israel. Sexual sins have been around. <laughs> it's been around since people have been around. It ain't no new thing. But I'm going to tell you something. We got some problems with it today, don't we? Huh? People living like cats and dogs. We just read it here in 1 Corinthians. It, uh, we read it just a couple chapters back. I think, was it chapter 5? I think it was 5. Uh, when it said, uh, uh, he had a right in his letter, he said, Look, uh, you're worse than the world. In the church, and you ain't done nothing about it, uh, uh, there's a young man uh, that's fornicating with his father's wife. Now, that isn't his mother. That's his stepmother. It was known in the church, and they wouldn't do nothing about it. Huh. And he says, I'm telling you, just like I was there, separate yourself from that person, which they did. They, they separated them. By the way, that person, uh, do, 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 do you know why you separate from fornicators in the church and drunkards in the church? You know why you separate from people in the church? So they'll repent and get right with God, then he come back to fellowship. Because in 2 Corinthians... That person that was fornicating uh, with his uh, uh, father's wife, his stepmother, <clears throat> he repented. And uh, they weren't going to take him back into church. First, they wouldn't throw him out. And then uh, uh, Paul wrote him said, throw him out of the church. He said, that ain't right. Oh, yeah, you've got to separate them. So Why? So they can see their sin and they can repent and come back. Then he repented and quit it. And they weren't going to take him back. He says, take him back in the church. He repented. Isn't that a wonderful thing about God? 
You go out and get drunk. You go out and fornicate. Not that you should do either one of those things, but the church should take you back when you repent. Aren't you glad that someone like you and I can repent and come back to God? Don't you be such a Pharisee that don't say, you, uh, you know, fornication, uh, uh, that can be in just having bad thoughts, too. It doesn't have to be the actual act, you know that? That can be when you put it up on uh, the uh, Internet. Put the pornography up on the Internet. Just hit a couple buttons, there you are. Yeah, that's fornicating, too. Yeah. So it's nothing new. It's always been around. It was around there in the wilderness. Neither let uh, us commit fornication as some of them committed. Look at this now. And fell in one day three and twenty thousand. God in the wilderness, there was twenty three thousand people that were fornicators and God killed them. What, uh, what if up and down... Uh, we're on Ridgewood Avenue. We got cheap motels up and down Ridgewood Avenue. Uh, what about if uh, uh, What about if all the fornication that was done uh, last night up and down Ridgewood Avenue from people uh, uh, shacking up in the cheap motels? Uh, what if all them people were killed and they laid the bodies out on the curb on Ridgewood? Man, we had some piles of people. Would you be in that pile, church member? I don't know. We got some people in, uh, uh, you say, preacher, uh, you got fornicators coming in your church? Yeah, you got them coming in your church too, you Pharisee. Think there ain't no fornicators coming in your church? You lying. You ain't got no little white church because there ain't none like that. huh? You see, this is for our teaching. The 23,000 people that were slain because of fornication that's for our example, church, and that's for your example out there in the Facebook audience. Yeah. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Remember that? Remember that? Uh, you know, I talked about it in John chapter 3. The Bible says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, it's talking about the wilderness here, uh, here in 1 Corinthians, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, remember he, uh, he made a snake, a brazen snake, and he put it on the pole. And he says, if you look up at the serpent on the pole, you'll live. Look and live. Look and live. That's what the, the songwriter wrote. But you see, it says, those that looked and trusted and repented of their fornication and of their sin, that they were saved, and you can repent of your fornication today, too, and you can be saved, amen, and you can come out of it. And even if you are saved, you can be brought back to Christ, and you can restore your fellowship with the Lord like that fellow that was written about in 1 Corinthians 5. You go back there and read it later if you want. We're not going to go back to it now. And he was forgiven in uh, 2 Corinthians. Neither murmur ye as some of them murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. I mean... God had turned people over to the destroyer to just to be a murmur, a grumbler, and complainer. You know some folks that come around and always grumbling and murmuring and complaining and telling bad stories on someone? Maybe it's you. Maybe it's you out there in the Facebook. You're the one all the time telling a bad story on someone and grumbling and complaining. You better be careful. God might come and send the destroyers to take care of you. He done it in the wilderness. And it said that this, this, what he's telling us here was what? For our what? Example. For our example. That's what it's for. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, verse 11. And they were written for our admonition. You see, it was written. What does it mean for our admonition? It's time to correct us. It's trying to quit us from being murmurers. It's trying to quit us uh, from being adulterers. It's trying to quit us from doing wicked things. It's for our examples, and they were written for our admonition. That's what this Bible's for, and it's for our admonition that we can do these things that are pleasing for God. Upon whom uh, the ends of the world were come. Verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth Take heed, lest he fall. Now the Bible says this. 
Pride cometh before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. You better be careful. You better not be proud. You say, I had, I remember Dennis Saborn. Then uh, some of you that are watching in uh, in Milwaukee, we got, I got people watching in Milwaukee too, where I used to minister. We had a guy there that was wonderfully saved. He was supposed to do a bunch of time in jail, and he got his uh, time uh, wiped away. and And he was a great Christian, but he got proud, and he started preaching down at the men. I couldn't preach every service there. We had four services uh, six days a week, and seven services on Sunday. I couldn't preach all of them, but I'd listen to the messages in my office or I'd record them so I could know who was preaching. I was very careful about if I wasn't preaching, I want someone to preach right. And Dennis was preaching down at the men. And I, li I heard him. I was in my office and he was preaching. And I said, tell Dennis come in my office. And he come in. I says, Dennis, why are you preaching down at the men? I says, that's where you come from. He was condemning them and and he was saying, well, you lousy drunkard and you this and that. And I used to do that and I'd never do it again. He said, I'm sick of these sinners. I says, well, you're nothing but a sinner saved by grace. He said, I'd never get drunk again. I'd never do this again. I'm to, you know, pride cometh before destruction. You better watch out. You better watch out there on Facebook. What you condemn others of and, and you say you'll never do it, you could do it again. I'm talking about a Christian. Dennis did. You could do it here, church. You could you could fall back into it. Don't you think you're? It says here now all these things uh, uh, happen unto them for our examples. Wherefore let him, verse twelve. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest. Dennis thought he stood. He fell back in all the sins he was in before, plus worse, worse, worse. It was worse. He went in the worst sin than he was in. Take heed, lest you fall. Watch out. Stay humble. Stay close to God. Repent. Some folks come in our church and some folks out there in the Facebook audience, you living in sin and you won't even admit it. Yeah. Living, living like heathens. You ain't supposed to live that way drinking and carrying on and so on and so forth and it's all about the world and uh, as as we read about there the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play christians live like that how sad take heed lest you fall now this is verse 13 this is the big verse and this is the verse i'm finishing on i read to this now listen carefully this is the big verse 10 13 first corinthians Therefore, it says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man, men or women. Every temptation is the same. Everybody's tempted. You're tempted to be a, murder, a, a, a murmurer. You might even be tempted to be a murderer. Tempted to be an adulterer. Tempted to be this or that. You see, you don't sin until you're tempted first. You see? So it says this. Now look here. Look very carefully, Facebook, and look very carefully, church. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man, mankind, man or woman. We're all tempted the same way. Here's my Eugene on here with the hearts and the thumbs up. God bless you, Eugene. He got saved. So you sit right up here. He, he's in Texas. Eugene, are you up on the roof? He's in. He's in Houston. <laughs> I heard the I heard the governor of Houston say, "You better get up on the roof." <laughs> Water's getting high. That's what I said. I don't know if Eugene's on the roof or not. <laughs> there had no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But look at it. But God is faithful. Ooh, glory to God. God is faithful. Great is Thy faithfulness. Great is Thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Oh, Eugene texted me, he ain't in Houston, he's in Austin. No, he ain't on the roof. I think he's got water there, though, too. But anyway, he just, this thing, you can preach on this thing, and notes can come up, and hearts start flying, and thumbs up, and all that kind of crazy. Facebook is crazy. I'm just learning about it. I don't know much about it. 
that. I don't know much about it at all. But look at here. Let's start reading that verse again. There is no temptation taken you but such as common to man, but God is faithful, amen, who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. There is no, no temptation that is above our not sinning. If you sin, oh, my dear, my dear granddaughter just tuned in. Hi, Jesse. <laughs> God bless you. Granddaughter from Wisconsin. Well, a lot of people come on this Facebook. They come on there from all over the country. Bless you, Jess. Thank you for sending pictures of my precious grandchildren. I love them. The great grandchildren. You're my grandchild. But anyway, this verse 13, and we're finishing. There hath no temptation taken you, but as such is common to man. But God is faithful, and will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. If you sin, Travis, if you sin, it's your fault. Exactly. No temptation taking you, but it's common to everybody. I have drunks come in here all the time. I just had one, and, and I had another, he sent another drunk on his behalf. I had a drunk that was doing good for a while, <laughs> and went out and got drunk again. Helper. I mean, a good can do good. I have it around here all the time. And I, t I told him when he was here, and he was having, I says, you don't have to get drunk again. And I know, I know, God is faithful, God is faithful. What happens? I have it happen around here all the time. They go out and get drunk again. Why do they do it? Because it's their fault. It's their fault. If I get drunk, it's my fault. Glory to God. Now, I've not been perfect by far. Shot. You ask my wife, she could fill you in on the details. I'm not perfect by far. But one thing I haven't been in these 48 years and three months that I've been saved, I ain't been drunk. Amen. So don't come and don't you drunks around here. We got a lot of trouble with alcohol around here. And Christians, uh, I think they say they're Christians, and they get off it for a while in a week or two or a month, some off of it. And, and, and I just had someone I'm dealing with today that off cigarettes for four years as off cigarettes, start puffing them cancer sticks again. Shame on him. Wayne, you don't have to sin if you don't want to. Gregory, I'm talking to you. Yeah. Jose, that's for you. You don't have to sin. I could name everybody in here. And I could name everybody out there. I've got some names on here. Eugene, you don't have to sin. Who else I got on here? There's others. Someone's on here and went on and off. They go in and off. I guess it gets too hot for some of them. They bail out. Uh... <laughs> you don't have to sin no temptation taking you but it's common to man and God is faithful and not suffer you to be tempted above which you are able but with temptation make a way of escape that ye may bear it oh my dear friend we sin because we want to the Holy Spirit of God lives within us and it says he'll give us a way of escape that means we don't have to sin that means when, we're, we, when we lust and we're tempted and we sin, it's on our part. It's not on God's part. And don't you forget that. Don't you forget that. You don't have to sin. I don't have to sin. How, how, how many sinners we got in the church here tonight? How many sinners? Oh, Y'all better get your hand up. Some of you got put two hands up. We're all sinners. Out there on Facebook, you all sinners. Now you either save sinner or lost sinner. And if you're a saved sinner... If you're a lost sinner, you can't do nothing. The devil just drags you around by the nose. But if you're a saved sinner, you don't have to sin. There's no temptation. You have a choice. I mean, that, that, I, I, some people say you don't have a choice. God just controls everything. Oh, no. That ain't what it says here. It says here, there had no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer to be tempted above which ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that ye may bear it. So uh, uh, don't don't come. These people, some people come tell me that oh, it's just foreordained to God. You're going to just do everything you do. That's baloney. That ain't what this verse says. Because uh, 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 Bible says, uh, uh, you know what it said in 
in uh, First John. I read First John every day of my life before I go to bed. First John chapter two, verse one. It says, "These things I've written you that you sin not." That's why righteous can sin not. He says, "But if you do sin, you have an advocate with Jesus Christ, the righteous." That's what it's talking about here too. It says he'll give you an escape. Okay. If you don't, so what, what, what does it mean? If, if we've got a way of escape, that means we have a choice whether we choose to sin or not to sin. We have a way of escape. I mean, if it was all cast in concrete and we had nothing to say about it, it's just going to happen. We couldn't do nothing about it, could we? It's not cast in concrete. He says he's given us a way of escape. <clears throat> but you and I, uh, he, uh, uh, 1 John 5, if you read that over carefully, he tells us we shouldn't be, Christians shouldn't sin. But Christians do sin. And why do Christians sin? Because Christians choose to sin. You choose to sin, Travis. You choose to sin. Pastor Varga, I put up my, put my finger out myself. You out there on Facebook, you choose sin. God has not ordained sin. He's allowed sin. He's allowed our stupidity. He, he's allowed our rebellion. But thank God we can repent and get back as a Christian. Amen? And we can claim 1 John 1, 9 for Christians. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Glory to God. I hope that, I hope you're saved. I hope you're saved. I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. You out there in the Facebook audience or anyone here in church that's not saved, I'm going to give you a chance to be saved. If God's speaking to your heart, that's the Holy Spirit. And you can receive the gift of God like I did on April 4th, 1969. Oh, yeah. I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. And if God's speaking to your heart, that's the Holy Ghost calling you. And you can be saved. I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer for the church. You that aren't saved in the church and you that aren't saved in the Facebook audience, this is the prayer. Let me pray it. You pray it with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. Shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart. I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now dear one out there in Facebook have you trusted Christ today everyone has to have a getting saved day the Bible says you must be born again you must complete the transaction the Holy Ghost must speak to your heart and you must receive Christ as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even them believe upon his name if you in church is anybody here in church Anybody here had been weren't saved. You're here in church. You prayed that prayer and you got saved tonight. You never been saved before. Anybody at all? Yes, yes. God bless you. God bless you, sir. I'm so glad for that. Praise the Lord. All the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that repenteth. More over ninety and nine just people. Read this First Corinthians ten one to thirteen over several times. The sins of the children of Israel in the wilderness for our teaching and for our learning and uh, so that we won't do the same things. And we've got a way to get out in verse 13. God bless you for tuning in on Facebook. Send me some comments. If you got saved, let me know. I'll send you a Bible. Uh, try to help you as much as I can. Bye-bye on Facebook.